Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Stefan Zhang. Uh, with me is Tian Lan. We're, we're both from Salesforce Research. And today we're here to tell you about Warp Drive, which is a uh, framework, open source, to get fast end to end deep multi agent reinforcement learning on a GPU. Um, that's a mouthful. So hopefully today we'll tell you about the motivation for this, uh, for building this software. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll get to work with it yourself uh, if you. Uh, think it's useful for your applications. Uh, next slide, please, Tim. Um, so just to give a motivation, in recent years, machine learning has really pushed frontiers on many ends. Uh, you might have seen uh, the work that, that DeepMind has done on playing StarCraft, uh, and you know we've seen AlphaGo. Um, and many applications and scientific problems uh, feature multiple agents like that. Uh, you can think about people, robots, cars, uh, and all of these systems can be modeled using multi-agent reinforcement learning. Um, so uh, in our own team at Salesforce, we're working on designing economic policies using simulations of the economy. Uh, and in that economy, uh, a lot of people are working and making money. Um, and we'd like to understand how all that works. Um, you can also think about manufacturing pipelines where uh, multiple arms are trying to assemble product and then every arm uh, can be thought of as a, as a reinforcement learning agent that's learning how to optimize its own behavior. Um, and um, human AI interactions are another very great example where in the future we might be talking and interacting with robots and they might be trying to help us. And that means that we have to think about the interactions between these different agents. And uh, a very um, um, sort of our um, current issue is like, you know, traffic control, uh, trying to make sure that there are no uh, traffic jams or at least as, as few as possible. Um, and we can really think of uh, you know, traffic on highways and in our cities as like a huge collection of uh, strategic agents, like the car drivers and uh, traffic lights that are trying to uh, direct all these, um, these, these agents in sort of like the optimal way possible. Again, it's a really uh, big multi-agent learning problem. Um, okay, next slide, please. So, where multi-agent reinforcement learning comes in is that uh, you can try to simulate all these worlds uh, and then use this uh, technique called reinforcement learning to optimize the behaviors of the agents. Um, and ideally, uh, for a lot of these real problems, uh, we want to push the frontier to situations where we have thousands to even millions of agents, uh, where all these agents are uh, talking to each other or bumping in, into each other or trying not to bump into each other. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully we can use uh, the tools of RL to, uh, to analyze what is best for all these agents. So on the right, you see this very basic interaction loop um, that is like the, sort of the basic concept of reinforcement learning. Um, so you have a simulation, in this case of our literally mini economy. Um, and then from that simulation, uh, at every iteration, you'd, the, you can get an observation. You know? So um, we're trying to model the behavior of a single agent, for instance. Um, that behavior is modeled by that neural network that we see on the right. Um, that neural network receives some information from the simulation at a give, any given point in time, um, and maybe it gets some reward. Uh, and then that neural network needs to decide what to do. So, you know, if you think about an economic simulation, that decision could be, uh, you know, should I go work or should I go on vacation? Um, and then so uh, in reinforcement learning, uh, we have this iterative loop between the simulation and the agent over and over and over again. And in that world, we can um, you know, see how the world evolves as like the agent behaves. Um, okay, next. Next slide, please. Um, and as I mentioned, for a lot of uh, multi-agent learning problems, we really want to push the frontier where we can think about the whole economy, for instance, or we can think about all the cars on our roads uh, and then think about uh, what is uh, you know what is optimal in the, for those situations, and that means that we have to push the frontier uh, to you know include many many agents, and each agent then would have this reinforcement learning loop to uh, learn its behavior. So, um, in in the recent times, uh, a very popular approach to do this is distributed reinforcement learning, where you run the simulation step and the learning step across multiple machines. Uh, this could be because the simulation itself is complex. Uh, it could also be that the neural networks you're using are very big. Um, and so if you use multiple machines, uh, you can enable uh, simulation and learning in parallel. Um, 
So on the right, you can see two uh, sort of system architectures um, that, that have you know, been proposed and, and used in, in the past. So Mava and a CRL. Uh, I won't go into the details here. The idea is just that there's, uh, as a system, you can sort of set this up in many different ways and they all have like their own pros and cons. Now, one, um, one sort of very salient set of issues is that if you have multiple machines, you need to communicate between them. And that means that there's communication overhead for each time that you go into this um, uh, simulation loop, for instance. Um, and that could be between every individual step or between uh, getting sort of, you know, part of the simulation and then training on it. Um, there's always going to be that communication overhead. Um, second, as I mentioned, uh, if the simulation itself is very complicated or if the neural network is very big, you might have very hard, uh, heavy hardware requirements. Uh, and that means that if you then do distributed computing, you know, like uh, it's always not trivial to get the right balance of hardware and pods and, and, and so on. So um, that, that is also a non-trivial issue. Um, <clears throat> so thirdly, um, some simulations run well on CPU. Sometimes you need some other hardware for that. Uh, similarly, some neural networks require CPUs or GPUs. And again, um, this complicates setting up such a distributed uh, learning system uh, in practice. Um, and then finally, as I mentioned, uh, if a simulation has very complicated logic, sometimes CPUs are just not equipped uh, well enough to run the simulations fast enough. Uh, and this is particularly true if you have many agents in your simulation. Next slide. <clears throat> um, and if you look out there at the landscape of uh, reinforcement learning software, there's actually few frameworks that exist that would do end-to-end -end reinforcement learning on a single device. Um, so there are two examples, uh, Brax, which is uh, made by Google. So Brax is a single agent rigid body problem focused framework. Um, they use functional programming based on JAX. Uh, and then there's also Isaac Jim, which is made by NVIDIA, which focuses a lot on robotics applications. And again, um, that's really focused on a single agent case. Um, and really, if you try to uh, sort of, you know, use those frameworks for the multi-agent setting that we're interested in, it's really hard to get it to work in a very efficient way. Um, and in particular, if you think about multi-agent simulations, uh, the state representations that you need are typically structured over different agents. They're not the same uh, across agents. Um, you know, you might have very sort of complicated graph structured logical branching because uh, not all agents are, can do the same thing, for instance. Um, and uh, you might need all kinds of um, memory uh, data structures uh, like hash tables, immutable collections uh, to keep track of all the information across all the agents. And this, again, can be hard to um, just simply uh, implement in the existing frameworks because, for instance, parallelization is um, actually not possible. Okay, next slide, please. So in comes Warp Drive. This is something we built. Um, and so here's some key features and benefits. Um, so we offer flexible and lightweight Python API. Um, the training part works with PyTorch. Uh, the simulation right now we use CUDA C uh, with NAMA support coming soon. And um, yeah, like, you know, the benefit, the first one, is that there's no back and forth copying between different machines. Uh, everything is on a GPU, which means that um, there's one single source of truth for your data, for the simulation, and uh, for the data that the agents are training on. Uh, so there's no unnecessary copying and communication. Um, we can run with thousands or more agents and thousands or more simulations in parallel. Um, and because of that, we can quickly train on extremely large batches of experience. Um, the framework also now supports multiple GPUs uh, in parallel. Um, so we actually have this hybrid, like multiple GPUs uh, with uh, every stack on a single GPU. Um, and then altogether, um, we'll, we can achieve over 100 times higher throughput uh, compared to CPU-based counterparts. Um, and what that means in practice is that we can now run millions of reinforcement learning iterations per second and train uh, you know, multi-agent reinforcement learning systems in just a few hours, all on a single GPU. Right? So we see orders of magnitude faster performance. And um, you know, the, you know, a big chunk of the presentation, we're going to show you a lot of uh, exciting results and sort of proof points uh, to show you um, how that works. OK, next slide, please. Um, yeah, so as I, so here's like a slide on the design principles. Um, so as I mentioned, all the work here is uh, done on a single GPU. There's no uh, data transfer cost uh, between a CPU and a GPU. Um, and uh, moreover, like if you compare our 
uh, imperative and stateful program uh, with the competition, you know, it's it's actually easier to work with because, um, as I mentioned, JAX, for instance, is a functional programming language, which again has pros and cons. Um, we have very granular control, uh, and we give you very granular control over how uh, GPU blocks and threads can be mapped. Uh, so you can build very complicated environments, uh, and we're perfectly uh, compatible with that. Again, it's very hard to do that in uh, existing higher higher level languages like JAX. Uh, and we also have like a bunch of tools that make it easier for you to develop your own applications using Warp Drive. Okay, next slide. Right. So what, what do you get if you download Warp Drive today? Um, you get uh, a number of pre-implemented learning algorithms uh, like A2C and PPO. These are very popular RL algorithms to train your agents with. Um, we give you standard ways to train um, to, to track your training and the, like you know get all the metrics uh, we support flexible saving loading model checkpoints um, and this is um, custom because again like the data all resides in the GPU um, we have like uh, utility functions to generate wallets for you um, and uh, if you are porting your own simulation from a CPU version to a GPU version we have a consistency checker tool uh, to make sure that you're uh, uh, sort of you know correctly implementing your own GPU um, simulation. Um, and we have a flexible wrapper that automatically can switch between simulations that run on a CPU or a GPU. So uh, we try to make life as easy as possible for you. Now, what you uh, need to build as a user is uh, reset and step functions in Python. And, uh, you know, like for your own applications, you might have to build a simulation. Um, and uh, right now, that happens mostly in Crude C, but as I mentioned, we are actively working on ways to uh, simplify that too using Numba and other tools. All right, um, next slide, please. Right, and um, so a very recent development here, again, uh, to make life easier for everyone, is uh, we partnered with PyTorch Lightning uh, to make a uh, PyTorch Lightning compatible version of Warp Drive. Um, so PyTorch Lightning provides a modular simulation training workflow uh, to quickly get your experimental code to production ready code. Um, so that means that uh, we remove even more overhead so you can focus on building your simulations, uh, running your RL pipeline, and, and building your models. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, we can also um, tell you more about that in our blog. Uh, so um, yeah, hopefully you can see the link there, and then we're happy to share that too later. And uh, Tim will also give a demo about this uh, in his presentation live. So you know, he's very brave. Um, all right, OK, so I'll hand it over to Tia now. Uh, he's going to tell you a lot more about how all of this works, but hopefully uh, we got you excited to you know give WorldDrive a look and uh, use it for your own applications. All right, Fair, turn over to you. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, Stefan, for the introduction and uh, interesting discussions over the uh, our development of uh, WorldDrive. So, uh, following, I will uh, first discuss some benchmarks of warp drive from several uh, complicated simulations. Then I will uh, talk about the warp drive infrastructure and how we implemented it. Uh, so first uh, we start with benchmark. So for this benchmark, we uh, used the two uh, fairly complicated uh, multi-agent reinforcement learning uh, environments. One is a so-called tag game. So in the tag, we have uh, N taggers work together uh, to catch M runners. So there are, for e each individual in, uh, in environment replica, there are M plus N agents in total. The goal for each agent is to learn how to uh, optimally accelerate or break and run around on this uh, 2D playing ground. Uh, for benchmarking, we also used two semantic uh, variations uh, where agents have uh, partial or full observations with partial observation the agents can only see the closest k agents for example and on the right hand side uh, our covid-19 simulation environment uh, in this environment we model health and economic dynamics during the uh, covid uh, pandemic the simulation step is uh, um, basically trying to uh, simulate this much more uh, complex environment compared to the tag so we have 52 agents in each individual environment. 51 of them are uh, representing governors and the federal, and the other one is a federal government. 
So this is a complicated two-level multi-agent environment where um, uh, the, the United States uh, state agents decided the stringency level of the policy uh, response to the pandemic, while the U.S. federal government provides uh, uh, subsidies to eligible individuals. So actions taken by each agent affect its, uh, uh, for example, health and economic outcomes like unemployment, GDP, and death. Uh, so uh, for tag game, we first uh, test out uh, the throughput with more and more environments running on warp drive. So we can see that the warp drive achieves nearly a perfect parallelism and millions of reinforced learning steps per second over thousands of environments, starting from, um, from one to 1,000 in, in this figure. So we, we can reach, uh, for example, uh, almost 10 million environment step per second and uh, 1.3 million end-to-end -end training iterations per second with uh, 2,000 attack environments and each having five agents in this uh, example. And uh, we can also reach, for example, close to 3 million environment steps per second or 18 million action samples per agent per second with 1,000 agents. So here we have per agent per second because um, in this environment we have, for example, 1,000 agents. So this action sample is uh, uh, is basically taking uh, account for this uh, this amount of agents. Um, we also reach uh, during this process. We also reach much better sampling performance. For example, compared with uh, PyTorch, uh, we have 3.6 times more than PyTorch sampling uh, speed, and uh, for 1,000 agents, we can reach 18 million action samples per agent per second, as we show. And we can see that those uh, numbers uh, grows almost linearly with a number of parallel environments, uh, suggesting that a warp drive uh, backend really reaches a very um, um, optimal uh, parallel throughput. Um, so the other uh, indicator is for each individual uh, environment, uh, how it scales with more and more agents because we are uh, doing the multi-agent uh, simulation. So warp drive also achieves some uh, orders of magnitude faster simulation speeds uh, than the CPU implementation. Here, the CPU basically is a one CPU core. Uh, for, for this uh, fair comparison, we just want to see how our warp drive uh, uh, versus uh, CPU and the GPU, how they uh, compare each other uh, in regard to the each individual threat. So we can reach 50 to uh, up to 500 times the speed up compared to a NumPy version, which is optimized, uh, optimized NumPy version on a single CPU for up to 1,000 agents. And with partial agent observation, we can see that the warp drive uh, on GPU almost achieves a nearly perfect parallelism as well. Um, so here, um, basically, this is a tag game running on a GPU versus on a CPU nodes. So CPU is an N1 uh, node with 16 CPUs running together. So we can see that the warp drive achieves uh, also orders of magnitude faster training speeds than CPU nodes. Um, on warp drive, we can also further scale up the number of environment rep replicas at least tenfo tenfold in here. In here, we, uh, we run the tag environment with 100 runners and five taggers, uh, but only 60 environment replicas because the uh, M1 nodes can only support uh, like 60 environment. Uh, beyond that, it's uh, really hard for, for CPU to manage, especially for the data transfer and the parallelism over those uh, environments together. So, so this is a really good achievement uh, from warp drive. Um, and uh, running on GPU versus the CPU. And uh, also we compared the, the, uh, this COVID-19 simulation. Uh, we, we also have um, pretty significant performance gains uh, in this um, much more complex simulation. Uh, well, in, to in overall, we uh, achieve 24 times higher throughput with uh, 60 parallel environments. Um, and uh, we can even scale up more with more and more environments uh, because uh, warp drive fully utilize uh, parallelism over the threads level in GPU. So it can manage uh, in our benchmark 600 parallel environments as well. But for the fair comparison, we, we compare this N1 nodes with one single A100 GPU. 
So especially, for example, for the data transfer, we don't have any data transfer during the process because we have only one time data uh, uh, feed from CPU to the GPU, then all, all the following end-to-end -end training and the simulation will running exclusively on the GPU. And the training, you can see that we have much higher training throughput because uh, the backend uh, simulation is running on GPU in fully parallel. So it can uh, consistently uh, feed the uh, training uh, data uh, without any problem. And in total, we reach like 24 times higher throughput. And, uh, and this is, uh, I just mentioned, we can scale up to almost 100 parallel COVID-19 environments. And the before 600 or 500 is almost going linearly uh, upwards uh, in, in terms of the speed, while the CPU version definitely cannot. Uh, so recently, we also have several new uh, uh, exciting updates uh, with uh, following the first uh, uh, version of Warp Drive. Uh, first uh, interesting um, uh, tool is uh, so-called auto scaling, because uh, we noticed that uh, for users, uh, how to um, optimize the GPU hyperparameters, like uh, uh, how how many threads, how many uh, GPU uh, devices, and uh, how many running instances that those GPU can support, usually is very hard to to uh, understand, especially in the very beginning. So what dry now can auto uh, optimize those numbers. Uh, so for example, uh, compare with a uh, default setting with, uh, with this uh, optimizer, uh, we can reach 100% GPU memory and uh, almost uh, three times GPU active time. And the throughput is also um, three times. And uh, we also support the multi-GPU um, training uh, in warp drive. So each GPU will run an independent warp drive instance for an asynchronous simulation, while the gradient of model uh, will be synchronized for each training epoch, uh, as shown uh, schematically on the left-hand side. So for each iteration, each warp drive instance will run its individual GPU. And uh, after that, we will synchronize the gradients. And uh, for the next iteration, we'll start again. So, so we tested the speed from one to four GPUs, for example. We can see that the uh, total throughput uh, is almost uh, scaling up uh, linearly. OK, so let's go for the demo. Uh, this is a very simple end-to-end -end example. Um, and as uh, Stefan just mentioned, we recently collaborated with, uh, with uh, PyTorch. Uh, PyTorch Lightning. So we have this blog and uh, this uh, PyTorch Lightning official demonstration right here. So if you are interested, you can also uh, go to here and uh, open uh, by yourself the the collab. And uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, demo is basically uh, telling you how we start from scratch and uh, build up this uh, continuous tag environment. And uh, we have those uh, function APIs and uh, we, we have this uh, running configs and with the config we can we can run the speed uh, run the simulation so let me uh, briefly go through it so if we open the warp drive um uh, from this uh collab uh first of all just to remember that the warp drive is a pure gpu uh simulator so usually in the runtime you should go to the um uh, change runtime type and uh, choose the gpu so after that, um, uh, this is a uh, we have some installation requirement. For example, we want the warp drive uh, uh, version and a few other torch version. And after installation, uh, you are ready to go. So uh, this uh, is an introduction. Um, if you are interested about the infrastructure that I will um, briefly uh, discuss also in this uh, workshop in a few minutes, um, you can go through it. And we have the white white paper all the tutorials from very basic, uh, like uh, how we push the data, how we how we uh, set up the environment to very advanced topics, like how you can um, do your simulation with multiple GPUs. And um, we have integrate integration with the PyTorch Lightning. 
So our API is a uh, is a uh, in this example is a Lightning uh, API. So like here we imp imported the Torch Warp Drive Environment Wrapper and the Lightning Trainer, and uh, we have a few uh, callback uh, backends like a Warp Drive uh, module and the CUDA callback. So behind the scene, uh, we have those inf infrastructure uh, uh, set up ready for you. So we uh, remember we are in a CUDA environment, so we need to make sure that we have the GPU uh, as the hardware to, to run. And uh, so in here, we, we, we use it, this tag in environment as example. In this example, we have five taggers uh, here and 100 runners. And we have a few environment setup like episode and so on and so forth and the skill level for each tagger and runner. So skill level means that, uh, for example, whether the tagger have a more flexible uh, movement uh, than runner, maybe a tagger can run much faster than runner, then the tagger uh, skill level will be, for example, three versus runner is one. And in this in this example, we have a fair um, uh, game that the tagger and the runner, they are both uh, in the same uh, level. And uh, we have this uh, setup. And uh, this trainer setting is basically uh, tell the warp drive how many number, how many environment rapid cars you want to run. In this example, we have a 50. And uh, how how big the train batch size. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I think I, I need to switch the screen. I forgot that. Sorry about that. Um, let me, sorry about that. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do the screen. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I for, forgot to switch the screen for the demo. Um, yeah. So basically, I, I, as I just mentioned, we have this installation, and uh, and this is a tag environment. What it looks like. So we have this uh, pink as the taggers, and the runners are blue dots. So we start. Then this is a uh, before the training. So you can see that, and uh, and. Uh, we basically have this uh, PyTorch Lightning installation and the warp drive as an environment wrapper. So warp drive will, uh, will wrap up the CUDA environment in the backend. And uh, finally, we we we, uh, in, we import some CUDA backend and the warp drive module. So this module will uh, will integrate the Lightning trainer together with the environment wrapper that in in our warp drive. So. Then as I just mentioned, this is running config. So uh, I don't have uh, too much time to, uh, to go through it, but basically it's set up the environment like number of taggers and number of runners and their skill level and how, how many, how much uh, speed uh, you, can, you can go on, how, uh, how much angle you can turn in each individual step, so on and so forth. And we, in this example, we have uh, 50 number environments and the policy is basically the, the the policy network that we are using in this uh, uh, in this uh, simulation. So we use A to C here, and we train both the runner and the tagger in this uh, in this example. And we in this model, we just use a pretty uh, simple, fully connected uh, neural network with two hundred fifty six by two hundred fifty six. So finally, we save to the to the folder, and uh, and we can go. So so first first step for the for the warp drive basically starting from here is we have this uh, uh, environment config then all those things will fit into the environment wrapper that uh, supported by the by the by the warp drive and this environment wrapper what it does is basically load this uh, uh, config and uh, telling the backend which is written in CUDA that uh, what the environment is going to do and uh, uh, above that we have some uh, API uh, level infrastructure that will talk to the CUDA uh, backend and running the simulation step by step that I will briefly go through later. Um, so we, we, we have this random seed to start the game 
And we have this because we have multiple agents together. So we need to make sure that the, the model understand uh, who are the taggers and who are the runners. Is this a simple uh, agent ID mapping? And with that, we have the runner, wrapper, uh, environment uh, agents mapping, and uh, we can start to go. Mm. So we created this Lightning Trainer. So Lightning Trainer is basically take this warp drive uh, environment wrapper instance and feed into this uh, uh, Lightning Trainer. And, uh, and after that, it's just uh, running this uh, simulation with the trainer.fit. So we fit this warp drive module. And uh, in this simple uh, demonstration, uh, I already pre-run this. So we run uh, 10, uh, in total 10 epochs. And you can see that uh, our uh, runner, we have a very um, detailed uh, uh, logging system in supported by warp drive. So basically we have all those uh, necessary information running and uh, recording for you. So for example, we have this uh, runner uh, policy, what's the uh, status for it? And uh, also the tagger, uh, what's the running status for it? So, and after the all the training is done, you can go back to the, uh, uh, I think we have the also the, wait, um, I think it's uh, behind this. Yes, we have this uh, tensor board to show all the um, information that uh, you, scares. yeah, but uh, I don't have uh, too much time because I waste a little time to, to switch over here. But uh, you, if you are interested, you can run this and uh, all those logs will be, metrics will be sh showing up in, right here. And uh, finally, uh, you can visualize the, after the training that I will show in the site. And uh, and and in the very end, we will have a grace, graceful close that close all the, uh, all the backend modules and uh, also we have some uh, proper memory uh, management. So make sure that the GPU does not have any uh, memory leakage or the system has any issue. Then finally we exit the, 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 the warp drive gracefully. So this is uh, basically what uh, warp drive is uh, doing in this uh, simple demonstration. If you are interested, uh, you can go to our uh, GitHub or PyTorch Lightning um, blog. And uh, from there, we have uh, uh, almost uh, 10 different uh, uh, different kinds of uh, demonstrations and the tutorials that you can play with. And uh, I think after that, you will be uh, fully uh, understanding what's going on. And you can start from there to build your own uh, interesting environments. So let me go back to um, to our presentation. Uh, share again. Okay, so finish this. So this is a before the training. Um, yeah, you can see that the this is a just a, a copied directly from that uh, um, demonstration. So you can see that they are just randomly run. Uh, the tagger, taggers do not have really uh, any capability to consistently catch any runners. And uh, and after our live demo, by the way, uh, you can, as I mentioned, you can go to this uh, tutorial. And also we have this tutorial um, posted on the PyTorch Lightning official website as well. So, and after the training, you can see that with a different uh, level of uh, taggers, um, those uh, uh, runners can be consistently catched. It means that uh, our tagger game is, uh, is, is trained very well. Okay, so uh, let me uh, uncover some uh, uh, <laughs> mystery of uh, uh, of warp drive and how it works. So the logic of a warp drive is that uh, we have each GPU thread simulates one single agent. In in this uh, background, the agent means that one single actor 
in one single uh, training instance. It's not like a typical uh, reinforcement learning agent, which uh, the agent means that you have a simulation neural network that uh, decides what step you should go. Here, the agent is one actor. For example, uh, one runner, one tagger in, a, in this tag environment. So each individual agent will, uh, will be simulated by and managed by one GPU thread. So you can see that one thread will take care of one neural network instance and doing the sampler and doing the action and doing the step exclusively for one single agent and go to the next state. And for each agent, you can see that it, uh, we, we have this GPU block to manage all those uh, threads, threads. So each thread has this agent. So all those agents with one simulation replica will be uh, will be uh, managed by one single GPU block. And uh, the shared GPU memory will store the policy neural networks and the batches of simulation data. So you can see that in this example, for example, we can one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In this, in this example, we have nine blocks, so we can simulate by default nine environments. And each individual environment, we can have uh, this, this many of threads, so in this uh, scheme, schematic demonstration, we have basically three threads. So we can simulate three agents in each individual environment. And uh, we have the, uh, in the intermediate layer, layer, we have a data manager and a function manager, which are a, a pure Python implementation. They serve as a intermediate API to let you define what the reinforced learning workflow look like. So in the end, we have this data manager and the function manager to manage the GPU device from the Python uh, interface. And the backend is the GPU device that are written in CUDA to uh, speed up all the threads and uh, block simulations. So this is a more detailed code structure uh, from the uh, bottom up uh, uh, view. So in the very bottom, we have the, this CUDA layer. Uh, it has a CUDA C version of the environment step reset sampler and the logger so uh, we have this step uh, we have the reset sampler and the logger uh, already generic enough for you to uh, to use without as a black box uh, for the for the CUDA environment layer we provide a lot of uh, tools and easy to use um, um, kernel uh, small kernel functions to facilitate the step function uh, writing as we uh, demonstrated in our uh, tutorials you can refer to. Then we have this uh, uh, Python API layers I just mentioned. And uh, above that, we have this Python service layer provides the uh, environment sampler and the reset classes. So remember in the, ver uh, in the very bottom, we have those uh, reset random and uh, environment reset uh, environment step function CUDA kernels. So this layer basically has those uh, uh, Python classes uh, uniquely mapping to each individual CUDA C functionalities. So basically, for example, CUDA sampler will fully manage uh, this uh, CUDA uh, random uh, kernel functions in the backend. So from the user's perspective, you just need to use those Python uh, classes, then you can fully manage what you should uh, you expect it to be done in the in the in the GPU backend, and on the very top, you we have this Python application layer. We provide the model trainer and the environment wrapper. The environment wrapper is uh, what you just uh, saw in our uh, demo maybe five minutes ago. So with that wrapper, this wrapper is a very high level wrapper function that taking care of the step and the reset function in a pure Python uh, interface. And behind the scene, we have this model and the trainer uh, ready for you and uh, going downwards to the, uh, uh, downwards to the, to, the, to, the, to the very end of the backend. And uh, very recently, as I mentioned, we have this uh, multi-device supporting so basically, we have individual uh, GPU instance running on uh, on a, a CPU process. So this each individual host CPU host will manage one GPU instance, 
And uh, with that, for example, in this case, we have two uh, GPU instances. And each individual instance is, we have this process wrapper uh, managed by warp drive, warp drive dot process wrapper. We will uh, start um, a CPU host uh, process. And behind the scene, we have this uh, process, uh, CPU host process uh, integrated with, uh, with uh, this GPU context. So each individual GPU context will uniquely map to one single CPU process. And we also uh, collaborated with the Torch distributed uh, uh, module together to run a, a synchronous uh, simulation with a sim synchronous trainer. So we, we provide those uh, utility functions that you can directly perform this distrib distributed training without any change uh, for the code that you originally expect to run on one single device. You don't need to change one, even one line of code. You just need to uh, specify how many GPUs you want to run. So uh, uh, finally, we also, uh, in our latest uh, uh, deployment, we, uh, we are trying to scale beyond 1,000 agents because in each individual GPU block, by default, uh, it can support 1,024 GPU threads, meaning that one simulation replica, uh, at the most, we can have 1,024 agents because you remember each individual thread is mapping to one individual uh, act actor or agent in the simulation replica. So warp drive uh, provides a cross-block synchronization. So the CUDA kernel functions uh, are generic for both thing, single blocks environment or multi-block environments in warp drive. That means that if you write a, a kernel function for CUDA step function, and you have this a synchronization for, for example, for for your agents, usually it's a, a it's a, a it cannot be avoided. For example, all the agents needs to at certain time uh, um, basically compare the nodes what they are, what their states are, for example. So ne they need to synchronize them. So this kind of synchronization, uh, we have this uh, uh, cross-block synchronization supported. So, so basically, that means that we can have multiple blocks together to form one single simulation replica. So theoretically, it, will, uh, it can support 1,000 agents times number of blocks um, uh, as a those many of agents for one single uh, environment. So, but this uh, skill also uh, comes with trade-offs because cross-block synchronization is very expensive. So it will sacrifice speed. Um, so if you are doing a default simulation that has more than 1,000 agents, I think you, you may need to consider some further optimize, optimization for the original CUDA kernels. But our uh, solution basically provides a general purpose um, implementation that you can directly, uh, starting from small scale uh, environments, directly go to a very large scale. I mean, large scale meaning that the number of agents are, is very large and, and to see the some original uh, result, if that is interesting, but you still are not satis uh, satis uh, satisfied with the speed, then you can you can consider to further optimize. So here I, I show a little bit uh, example for the warp drive enabled simulation uh, in terms of the code. I think in the demo we already have that, but that's kind of a pretty uh, uh, high level. Um, so I, I will I will not touch the very backend, but here we will show some basic uh, Python APIs, so we can get some feeling about what Warp Drive is trying to do uh, in more detail. So for example, for the Python environment, uh, imagine that we want to uh, develop a new Python environment. Uh, in this example, is attack continuous. So in this uh, for this step, it's very similar to just writing um, any other. Uh, Python-based uh, reinforced learning environment, you basically have a reset function and a step function. Um, but remember that we are dealing with a, a multi-agent environments, so so you have to consider uh, those uh, step function are taking uh, in terms of taking action in terms of uh, arrays instead of uh, scalars. So basically, for example, we have those uh, speed actions 
and the direction direction actions, uh, each individual element of those uh, arrays will will be uh, mapping to some uh, some uh, uh, particular agent in in this uh, scenario, and we will generate observations and the computer rewards. So basically, then finally we return observation uh, rewards and the down as a, like a, like a GMA environment. So so this is very typical. Um, so remember that, uh, first of all, what warp drive is trying to do is we, we basically remove all the unnecessary, uh, data transfer between CPU and the GPU. So we will have one time, only one time data transfer from CPU host to the GPU in the very beginning of the simulation. So, so in this scenario, for example, we have this data feed class that we have some definition of different, uh, uh features or different uh, 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 other observations, initial, initialize their observations that you want to fit into the GPU. So in this data feed class, we have those uh, specification over GPU data. So remember that here we have reset and step function, and here we already define, for example, in, in terms of NumPy, what those arrays and uh, data structure look like. So in this step, we are specifying uh, for example, we, we have this uh, flag saying save, save copy and apply at the reset, meaning that uh, the warp drive will take this uh, instruction to make a copy of this data and automatically initialize the data array to, to the same value at each reset inside of the GPU. And we have some other different uh, uh, flags as well. So in this case, we have this uh, data dictionary defined for the warp drive to pick up and feed the data from CPU host to the GPU. So, and with the data ready in, inside the GPU, uh, remember we have this Python step function. And, uh, and uh, this is uh, the, I think the most uh, difficult or actually the only uh, thing that the user needs to really involve uh, is, uh, is uh, basically convert your step function uh, in Python to a CUDA step function. So basically you can have a direct uh, conversion uh, for example, you have locations and directions, and uh, this CUDA basically you have location and the speed as arrays, and uh, and this is un unavoidable is that because you have the GPU, so you need to make sure that the thread and the block are mapping to get, uh, to the right agent and the environment. Uh, this is a very uh, primitive uh, writing. Inside CUDA, we also provide some uh, uh, utility functions that can help you directly mapping one. Uh, thread to one agent that you are trying to uh, trying to take care of, and finally, basically, this is a uh, CUDA C uh, translation for the uh, for the NumPy. And after that, uh, you can you can have this CUDA step function. Basically, this is you can see that all the data manager. And the function managers already manage all those devices data and push the data into the GPU. So in this in this step, we have this CUDA step function already uh, defined. Then last step is this uh, CUDA step function fit all the data into the into the into the GPU. Then then you then the CUDA step function can run, and the warp drive will take care of everything starting from here. And we also have uh, several utility functions on the Python level. To, uh, to simplify this step, basically we have, you, you just need to uh, define all the, uh, declare all the names of those uh, arrays and the uh, warp drive utility will automatically find from the data manager to, man to map those uh, arrays and feed those arrays into the, into the CUDA function directly. And finally, we have simulation development tools that uh, you can you can use to check the consistency between the CPU and the GPU versions. Usually, from the uh, uh, practical use case, uh, we will have a NumPy implementation in CPU first, and we are not satisfied with the speed, or we cannot we cannot uh, scale further. Then we consider to convert this uh, CPU version to the GPU version. Then all the other stuffs are already uh, ready for you. You just need to provide the step function and the for this step, we have this consistent checker, so we can run warp drive one time, and warp drive will have some random check, uh, random setup 
to check whether for each indiv individual step, your observation rewards and the DOM are 100% consistent between the CPU and the GPU. After that, you will have 100% sure that uh, your GPU implementation is is all right. Then you can you can uh, switch over to the GPU environment and uh, scale your uh, warp drive uh, simulation to thousands or even millions of agents in this case. And for the environment wrapper that we mentioned multiple times, um, uh, it helps lo launch the simulation on either the GPU or the C CPU. So with the GPU simulation, uh, remember we have the first reset happens on the CPU because this reset is basically uh, push all the data from the host to the, to the GPU. And then all the relevant data will be copied over to the GPU and the subsequent reset and steps will happen exclusively on the GPU and the data arrays are, will be modified in place. So it will be extremely fast and efficient. And we also have some lightweight training scripts and utilities for you uh, to study and uh, for you to um, further develop if you are interested in that. We provide several different end-to-end -end reinforced learning training scripts, uh, including PyTorch and our default trainer as well. So, uh, uh, and then I think I already finished my part. I think I will hand over back to Stefan to discuss the future of warp drive and uh, multi-agent reinforced learning. Yeah, uh, thanks, Tian. That was great to see. Um, and uh, again, I encourage everyone to go take a look at the demo online. Um, yeah, so so now that we've uh, shown you uh, a little bit about what, what Warpref can do, um, let's talk about the future. Uh, so what we want to do is democratize access to high-performance reinforcement learning systems. Uh, reinforcement learning is still, uh, I would say, as a technique, um, something that, that speaks to a lot of people's imagination, but um, it's still not always as trivial to actually deploy it and, and use it in your own production workflows or in your own experimentation. Uh, and so we see Warp Drive as a, a hopefully a very useful tool um, that can help make that uh, sort of experimentation and deployment easier for you um, as, as you sort of start thinking about where you can apply reinforcement learning in your own, um, in your own space. Um, so for us, uh, in the near future, we want to work on uh, making building simulations easier. Uh, as you saw, as Tim explained, like right now, um, we uh, have a lot of simulations where are implemented in CUDA, uh, and we've built a number of them ourselves, so you can take a look at those. Um, but you know, CUDA C is still something that, that not everyone might want to work with directly. Um, so uh, we are working on uh, supporting Numba, which is like a drop-in uh, GPU version of NumPy. Roughly speaking, it's not exactly the same, um, but uh, it would make uh, building your own simulations much easier. Um, and we're also thinking about uh, creating domain-specific languages uh, and optimized kernels to enable you to build a, a wide class of multi-agent simulations very quickly. Um, and so we have a number of initiatives that are coming out soon. Uh, one of them has to do with climate change, for instance, where we uh, are simulating the global um, climate and economy uh, and then use a similar uh, philosophies uh, that we've shown you in Warp Drive um, to really boost uh, research on sustainability and how that interacts with um, strategic uh, behavior. Um, so in short, uh, I think now that Warp Drive has, uh, has really been maximized uh, to sort of utilize like GPUs to a large degree, um, really uh, we're hoping to build more meaningful simulations, bigger simulations uh, for problems that a lot of people care about. Uh, and so we really hope also to engage the community and, and sort of um, come along with us and, and sort of share with us like what your problems are, what kind of problems you'd like to see solved, uh, where you think you can uh, use reinforcement learning and where uh, simulations of these sorts might um, help you. Um, and that would inform us too in understanding what kind of features we want to build to help you um, get to those uh, machine learning systems faster. Uh, so thanks so much for listening. I hope uh, this has uh, Pique your interest. Uh, so please, um, if we go to the next slide. Um, uh, next slide. Yeah, yeah OK. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this has piqued your interest. Um, so our code is on GitHub. Uh, go to github.com slash salesforce slash warp drive. 
um, you know, everything is there. Uh, it also includes a number of uh, example simulations. Um, as I mentioned, the, the attack environment, the COVID environment are there. Um, we have uh, an economics simulation uh, uh, framework there too that we've used for our own research. And as I mentioned, uh, hopefully very soon, uh, the climate change and um, uh, climate economic simulations will be available too. Um, we also have blogs that uh, will tell you a little bit more about the high level structure and the rationale. And we also have a white paper that's on the archive. So um, that white paper has all the nitty gritty detail in text. Um, if you want some more context and explanation for the, the code. Um, so with that, uh, thanks so much for listening. Um, it's been our pleasure. Thanks so much to ML Ops for hosting us and organizing this event. Um, it's wonderful to get the chance to talk about our work uh, and hope you all have a great day and uh, stay healthy.